My name is Mark Christensen. I am the head engineer here at uh, Engine Room Audio in New York City. I started mastering many years ago in my apartment as kind of a lark, and uh, there was a producer that I was working with at the time. Um, I used to be signed to Interscope, and this guy was producing me, actually, and came to my apartment to do some uh, pre-production work on one of my records, and I started playing him some of the work that I had been doing for local East Village rock bands, you know, some mastering, some mastering stuff. And he was so impressed by it that he started sending me some of his low-budget records and uh, ultimately the mastering and the production work kind of overtook you know the artist uh, in me I guess and uh, that's kind of how it ended up happening so it was more of a group of musicians really you know uh, than one specific musician it can be hard to describe what mastering is to people you know um, as a mastering engineer we use a lot of the same tools that you use as a tracking engineer or as a mixing engineer uh, you know we're using EQs we're using compressors we're using uh, you know, limiters, uh, same kind of set of, of tools, but we use them in a very different way. And, um, you know, I think that people sometimes get so kind of uh, stuck into one method of looking at things that they have a hard time looking at it from another perspective. And when you're mastering, that's really what you're doing is you're listening to frequencies. You know, you're not really listening to the songwriting. You're not really listening to the individual instrumentation. Um, you're listening to the the source as an overall kind of sonic, you know, set of frequencies and, and perceived volumes, and you're working with kind of the finished product. Um, I mean, you know, people always talk about you know mastering being like you know kind of putting the final finish on on the product, and I guess that's what it is, but it's. Uh, it's also getting it ready for the consumption of the popular culture, you know, making things radio ready. When it comes to equipment, you know, I, I really try to use the tools in the context that they are most suited for. I mean, I know that sounds like a weird answer, but I, I'm definitely not dedicated to the digital domain. I'm definitely not dedicated to the analog domain. Um, I find that, uh, you know, a mixture of both of those things is what works best for me. When it comes to the loudness wars, uh, as a mastering engineer, you know, you're definitely right on the front lines, right? I mean, that's, the, the mastering room is where all of that is happening, you know? Depending on what's going on with, with the EQ structure of a given track, um, you can often get away with less limiting than you think you're going to have to use and still maintain the perceived volume. Um, so that, that's basically what I try to do. I try to sort of use as little uh, limiting and, and compression as I can get away with while still you know, respecting the fact that ultimately I'm going to have to deliver something that has a lot of perceived volume. As a mix engineer, the most rewarding mix probably is this song called Fine Ass Mess by Mr. Probs. Uh, he handed me a very digital uh, session file and I actually went in and retracked a lot of the drums and a lot of the B3, added some human percussion elements. Um, you know, did the mix, gave it back to the management team, and at first they didn't even notice that I had replaced a lot of the stuff, but they were just like, oh, this just sounds so much more lively, it has so much more life. Um, and he's just an unbelievable singer, so, uh, and the songwriting was amazing. So that was just a lot of fun to be able to incorporate the digital elements, his amazing voice, um, add some sort of analog, actual, you know, human beings to it, and have it come out uh, in a way that was exciting. So that was a lot of fun. We've had some new artists coming in. Obviously, there's new artists all the time. Uh, we've got this great new artist on Def Jam named Dave East, who's been working upstairs for a long time. Got some very cool stuff happening there. Um, for me personally, I've actually been doing a lot more mixing and producing. Um, I'm still, you know, doing kind of the, the mastering as my day job, but um, since we have such a beautiful SSL room here, um, I've been able to kind of uh, develop that personality a little more lately um, in terms of working with some cool indie bands, but also doing mixes for, uh, you know, both indie artists, but also some major artists as well. So that's been, that's been cool.